How did I get into hardcore? I was always into like uh, more aggressive music. My older brothers were into stuff like Deep Purple and, and stuff like that, but I always liked the more energetic songs, the up-tempo songs. And then as I went to high school, I met uh, Armand, a drummer, and uh, he was like this whole scene of this stuff in New York City. Uh, I got into hardcore when I was 15 years old. Uh, I went with a friend who had been to a couple shows. I guess I was 15. I was uh, what, a sophomore in high school and uh, uh, just through friends and stuff, you know, started going to shows. I came down there, I was a social misfit. This girl put on punk rock shows there all the time, like every weekend there was a show. And one of the regulars came up and introduced himself to me and took me around and uh, had me meet a bunch of kids and the next time I came back, kids actually welcomed me and remembered my name. So we go and, you know, have a good time and mosh it up. And I've been here ever since. I started going to shows before. I started going to punk rock shows um, back where I'm from in Montreal, uh, which is Quebec, which is Canada, actually. And uh, I started going to punk rock shows before, and then um, there's all these small little shows and these obscure venues. <laughs> I was usually like the only one who would go, so I'd be traveling like real far, real far to do that. But it was all good; it was worth it because it was like it's like the most one of the most amazing things I've seen, you know. One day, like my friends all, hey dude, there's some show, like the showcase in Corona in California, and I was like, all right, dude, like I'll go, you know. Like I've heard a couple hardcore bands, but I didn't really know. I went and saw a band called Throwdown, like 18 Visions, and like I got hooked. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I've always gravitated to music for expression. I don't know why. Um, it's difficult to talk about uh, the freedom music offers you in rational terms. I actually started with bands like uh, punk bands, but also bands like Guns N' Roses and shit like that. Uh, those bands offered freedom. Hardcore. Uh, I found it probably when I was like 16 or 17. I'm from the projects, I'm from the inner city. Uh, poverty level, food stamps, the whole nine yards. Uh, 
a lot of New York hardcore, they, they had lyrics that dealt with those kind of things. They were urban issues, uh, paranoid perspective, uh, neurotic, uh, suspicious, and bands like Raw Deal, Sick of It All, uh, Sheer Terror, uh, Agnostic Front, uh, bands like that resonated with me, and that's my entry into hardcore. Basically, uh, five years ago, I went to an eyelid show out in Orange County. Like, it scared the heck out of me. I'm like, what is all this? And I just made lots of friends, and it just grew on me a lot. I listened to, started listening to a lot of hardcore bands, and I listened to the lyrics, and just the people, and the whole scene just really clicked with me, and it meant a lot to me after time. My older brother, back when I was like 12 or 13, uh, brought home some CDs, and uh, ever since then I've been listening to it. Uh, my big brother learned from friends of his, and I just played tag along until I started coming out myself. My, basically, my brother just handed me CDs that consisted of like just Hate Breed and uh, Boy Sets Fire and Death by Stereo, and just like stuff that I wish I could be more a part of, and just I wanted to find out more about it. Wow, it was about like seven or eight years ago with bands like Trial and Strive. I don't know, just like bands like that, like they had like really important messages and I was really into that and like most bands today, they don't have anything to say like at all. In case you guys are wondering, we're a straight edge band. And what that means is we don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't do drugs, we try to avoid all kinds of destructive behavior. We're not out to antagonize anybody, it's not a matter of thinking that we're better than anyone else. All we're asking you to do is ask some questions. Why do people do get drunk? Why do people smoke? Why do people do drugs? What answers do they find in that shit? Straight Edge is a, a lifestyle choice, a permanent lifestyle choice that someone makes to abstain from drugs, alcohol, smoking. Um, people incorporate slightly different stuff depending on who and where. No drugs. No drugs. No promiscuous sex. No promiscuous sex. No drugs, alcohol, anything like that. No drinking. Uh, no smoke, like, and no drugs, and uh, no promiscuous sex. It's basically just a, a lifestyle of abstinence. Um, the philosophy is that uh, you need the strength to face life with a clear head. I grew up from the age of like 13 on, experimenting with drugs and drinking and all that. By the time I hit 19, I was like, the hell with this, it just did nothing for me. I was just bored with the shit I was doing. I was just doing drugs and just doing stupid shit. I used to be into drugs, whatever and it cleaned me up because I knew that it was okay to be clean and a teenager. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that look at straight edge and think, you know, that we're really pious and, you know, and like look down on other people and I'm sure there's kids out there like that, but that's not what it's about. It's just, you know, making a, a personal choice, you know, living your life without certain elements, you know, that a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are into, you know. And if people are into that, you know, getting drunk, you know, and all that good stuff, let them have fun, you know, and that's, it's their lives, you know, it's, they have every right to do what they want to do with their own lives, you know. I believe it's made me a better person because, like, I look at the things that go on in the world and, like, I try to, like, make an example of myself and, like, show a better way for people. And, like, I always try to help people out that are down that, like, don't know some, like, some of the things in the world. Like, dude, I talk to people all the time that are all cracked out, all messed up, try to, like, make their lives a better way. And my mom's like that. My mom's pretty much dying, dude. She's like on her deathbed. She's always been on alcohol and drugs. And I don't want to end up like that. I don't want my family to end up like that. I never want to see anybody like that. It's not right. There's so much better things in the world than that. Being drug free is cool. And it's not, it's like, oh, you're a pussy. You don't do drugs. You don't smoke or whatever. And it's like, I don't have a problem with people that do that stuff. But if they cram it down my throat, I'm going to let them know that I'm straight edge. Like, I don't go around saying, oh, look at me. I'm straight edge. And just like, if people want to know about it, they can ask me. I don't care if anyone drinks or they smoke or whatever, yeah, me neither. but I'm not going to push my views off onto anyone. If they want to listen, they can listen. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit around and preach, but you know, whatever. I mean, just as long as someone just isn't going to criticize me for for my beliefs, then I don't, I don't give. I don't care. It's a personal choice for me, and I never preached it. I was never into like you know, wearing an X on my hand or anything. Um, again, it'll give you, you know, 
an instant in with a certain click. It's like uh, shaving your head and give you an instant in with some kind of, you know, some of the skinhead kids. But uh, I really, I really think it should all be a personal choice. You know? But there's no really right or wrong answers. It's just how you want to be, not who you should be. You don't, you don't have to be straight edge to be in the hardcore scene. You know, I mean, it helps because you can get better friends and more friends. You know, but. I started out being straight edge, and that's where I pretty much met all my friends. And then when I sold out, they're still all my friends, you know. But you go to other scenes, and if you sell out, you're not their friend anymore. But here, it's different. You, they don't care, just as long as you're cool with them. And it's a uh, straight edge isn't a big part of being hardcore. Cause I don't even know why people even think that. <laughs>
Because once you start realizing you're, you're impacting people's lives, you start, you, you realize that you got a bit of a responsibility. You can start asking why. You can't just be saying, hate, hate this, hate that, fuck this, fuck that. You have to get to the root of, of um, these feelings, these perspectives, these anti, these virulent and, and, and vehement uh, anti-social veins and social stratas that, uh, they, that exist in every city and state in the country that, I've, that we've been, we've toured through. It's everywhere. If you don't like the way what somebody's saying in a band or in a fanzine, get off your ass and write your own fanzine. You know, give your opinion on what it should be about. Same thing with music. Why complain when you can start a band or, or interview bands on a video camera or start a zine or it's something, I don't know, you know, just do something, you know. You can't do anything unless you try, unless you put effort to it. If, I just, if we just sit back and do nothing, nothing at all is gonna happen. It'll just it'll go to waste. You'll never find like you know, a group of people, or three groups of people, or four groups of people who just get in the van, go from city to city, and play shows, and you'll only get like between 100 and 200 or 300 bucks a night for it. You know? Like you'll never find people who are willing to do that for something. You know, we're, we're broke, we're gonna come home, we maybe be able to pay our bills, and we're gonna have to get jobs and pay our bills in the next month or two. And that's how it is for hardcore, you know? Like we're not making any money, we're not, we don't have a secure lifestyle at all. We don't work for the hour we jobs, we don't have jobs, and that's what we're doing. And it's because we love hardcore. This is the way I live, you know? It's like, you know, it's like I'm 27 years old, and People are like, when are you gonna grow up? You know, when are you gonna move on? When are you gonna get a real job? And so, you know, it's like, you know, I got a job that pays the bills, but that's not my life. You know, it's like, this is my life. You know, this is what I sink all my, all my energy and all my efforts into, into this, this thing called hardcore. It's a, an amazing thing because it's run by the people who love the music. It's not, you know, uh, this club decided, uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna exploit this music for a couple of months and then get rid of it. You can see like the differences in everywhere you go, but there's still like the basic like morals and like meanings behind hardcore pretty much everywhere. But I guess there's there's more to life than that. You know, there there are other aspects, but this is definitely the, the biggest, probably most influential. I, I find um, labels and, and scenes to be a pretty frivolous, frivolous, uh, innocuous thing in the face of life's real adversity and, and uh, suffering. I guess atrocity. <laughs> 46 years old, and I've been to a lot of places in this world. Uh, I was a field medic at the tail end of Vietnam. Uh, I've seen a drove truck. I've rode with uh, angels, outlaws, renegades, satans, and all that. Never wore a patch, but uh, at the same time, I know what real hardcoreness can be. So to me, being an old, excuse my French, fuck like myself, uh, the hardcoreness of all this is a lot of aggressional thoughts, but when it really comes down to hardcore actions and stuff, it's I giggle at most of it and just laugh and let them go, you know, because I know what hardcore really can be. Like trends are changing, and it seems like hardcore is catching on a lot to uh, bigger audiences with bands like Hate Breed and Poison the Well, like. Like every, every, every band is different, it has like a harder mentality and I think people are becoming more accepting and it's something, it's something different for a lot of people that they're beginning to open up and like we live in an area of time like where people are open to all sorts of different kinds of music and I think with that Harker will get a lot bigger, like hopefully it'll keep its values that it's always had and hopefully things will be better. Right now we're in a good, we're in, it's a really good time to Yeah. Right now we're in a really good time. Hopefully not at the peak though. No, hopefully not. Hopefully not at the peak. Now is, is good. We have a lot more kids coming into it. It's a good thing. Um, I plan on keeping it a big part of my life. I hope, like the music's always changing. And I hope it doesn't turn into something I don't like. The closer hardcore gets to the mainstream, <laughs> Uh, the more kind of loses focus from what I see. As the scene progressed, it got, you know, as, as any scene, it gets more exposure, it gets more people in it, it gets more diluted, you know? It's going to get mainstream sooner or later, and then uh, us real, like, hardcore fans are going to probably go back down to the underground and find another music to relate to, because a lot of these kids don't like mainstream music, and once their favorite hardcore bands sell out or something, they're not going to want to go see them in an arena 
you know, with the thousands of people. They like the they like the idea of going to a show with only 50 people there. You gotta do, you gotta make a lot of sacrifices, you know, to, to be able to do stuff like this. It's it's all worth it. I mean, it's all worth it. You get to you know, I'm, I'm miles, like, thousands of miles away from home right now. It's, I'm in freaking Arizona right now. It's, you know, I'm, it's probably minus 25 where I'm where I live right now. <laughs> and I'm hanging out. And I'm like. Just, Hanging out on the street like this. It's cool. fucking dope, dude. It's amazing. I don't know where it's going to go now, but I know it's going to continue. Um, and we're not going to retread um, any any of the waters that we've already fucking shotted. Um, All Our Anthems was written with the intent that it served as the epitaph for the band. We didn't think we were going to be doing anything else after that. So the songs were really introspective. Um, they were really, um, my part, um, autobiographical and, and personal and like an epitaph on my childhood. We won't be dwelling on those same issues again. Um, there's other things that I'd like to proceed forward with. So I, I guess in essence, I don't quite know where we're heading right now. In 20, 30 years from now, when you guys get old enough, you will not be able to turn on the radio anywhere outside of your own little antique CD system at that time. You will not hear any of this music anymore. All this will be gone. You'll still be listening to Zeppelin, Stones, and and all these other bands that, that were in my time era. And I find that disappointing for you and because, you know, you're going to have to live part of your memories of things that you did as, as young ones. Uh, you won't be able to just turn radio on and listen to it unless you have to actually go forth and push it down the throat of some musical uh, um, contraption to make something happen for you. And that's where I, I feel sorry for him. I really do. Park open some one word. Uh, one word. I want to uh, One word. That's <laughs> a hard one. I don't know if I can sum it up into one word. Uh, it's like it's, it's hard to describe in one word. Fun. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Pleasure. Uh, what I truly believe is a family. I don't know. I, I got a tattoo on the back of my arm because that's my life. It's my life. East Coast, one word would be awesome. I don't know the West Coast would be. <laughs> San Francisco would be hella. Hella. Hella awesome. Hella awesome. It's just amazing. Amazing. Stuff like that. <laughs> Hardcore in one word, it's heaven. This is heaven. In a world of complete and utter shit, it's the only place I can go and forget about it.